Hey friends, it's Riskit, and welcome back to another episode of the Deluge video manual, where I'll be showing you everything I know about using the Synthstrom Deluge. In the last couple of episodes, we dived into the subtractive and the FM synth on the Deluge. And in this one, we're going to be looking at ring mod. Ring modulation is another type of synthesis we have available to us to use in the Deluge. And it's really, really good at producing awesome bass tones or a lot of really crazy sounds like um, lasers and effects and things like that. It behaves a little bit like the subtractive synth engine in which you know you can pick oscillators and you still have access to the filters and a lot of the other options that the FM synth doesn't have. But it also acts a little bit like the FM synth in a way that it's got two carriers and uh, sort of transposing those carriers will alter the sound in a really unique way. It's kind of hard to think of ring mod as a type of synthesis because really it's more like um, an effect that you're applying to a subtractive synth engine in a way. But um, let's not get too hung up on that. Basically the way that we need to access ring mod is of course by pressing shift and synth to create a new synth. We'll press shift and synth mode and then we'll scroll across to ring. Now getting your head around the ring mod engine might take a little bit of getting used to, the same as the FM synth engine. And it can be quite difficult to conjure up sounds in your head and then try to make them come to life using the ring mod synth. But with enough practice, you'll definitely find little safe zones that you keep coming back to, almost like little pockets of gold. And um, hopefully that will sort of help you get on your way. Now, it's really hard to explain what's going on in the ring mod engine without first diving into a little bit of math, but please don't let that stop you because honestly, I suck at math, but I'm hoping that this formula is going to help explain it a lot better and therefore help you come up with the sounds that you want to come up with. I found it quite difficult to find a clear cut explanation of what's going on with ring modulation on the internet. I did watch a lot of videos and I read a lot of articles and some seem a lot more geared towards guitar players because obviously effects pedals have ring modulators in them and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and created my own formula. And yeah, as I said, I suck at math, so it might not be like mathematically accurate or laid out in the right way. But after trialing it out a bunch of times, I found that it seems to get the job done and explains what ring mod is, um, hopefully in a really clear cut way to you as well. Now I'm going to flash a graphic up on the screen that shows what this formula is. But just before I do, please note that if we press shift and oscillator one or two level, you'll notice that we can't change the level of these oscillators. They're both on and they're both turned all the way up. And this is by design because we need them both turned all the way up in order for this to work. So the basic formula is that we're going to get two different sounds playing at once. We're going to take the sum of oscillator one's frequency and oscillator two's frequency. And we're also going to take the difference of oscillator one's frequency and oscillator two's frequency. So the basic formula is that we need to find the sum of oscillator one's frequency and oscillator two's frequency. And let's say that equals X. And then we're going to take the difference of oscillator one's frequency and oscillator two's frequency. And let's say that equals Y. So technically we'll be hearing X and Y playing simultaneously, which will be two different tones, but we'll only get one output. So right now you're not really hearing much of that. We're essentially just hearing a basic square wave. And if we press shift, type, we can see that we are on square wave. So we need to essentially figure out what the frequency ranges are for a lot of different notes on the keyboard, you know, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth. So I've gone ahead and created another table that basically shows the common frequency ranges for all of these notes. This can be a really good reference point to come back to when you're using ring modulation. So right now we're on C3. So let's do the formula for C3. We can see in the table that the frequency range for C3 is 130.81 Hertz. So we're going to add together 130.81 for oscillator one and 130.81 for oscillator two, and that's going to equal 261.62 Hertz. We also need to figure out the difference. So we'll do another sum of 130.81 minus 130.81 for oscillator one and two, 
and that's going to equal zero. So 260.62 hertz, you'll notice on this table, isn't actually C3 at all, it's C4. So that means that when we're triggering C3 on the deluge, we're actually hearing a C4. We'll be hearing it going up because we're basically just listening to a tone that is playing at 261.62 hertz. I hope that this is making sense so far. Don't get too hung up on it. You don't need this to figure out how to use the engine. I'm just trying to give a really clear cut demonstration of what is going on when you're doing this stuff. If we wanted to check that as well, let's lay down a note. So remember, this is C3. We'll open up a new synth in another track, subtractive. and play C3. Let's just turn up another square oscillator just so that they're both going to hopefully be at the same level. So if we listen to our ring mod, which is this red track here, and then we'll listen to the subtractive one. So we can hear that this red track is indeed an octave above this blue track. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the subtractive synth track here. And now we're back into the ring mod. So let's try something different. Let's apply the same formula as before, but this time we'll pitch oscillator one up one octave. So we'll go shift and transpose above oscillator one. Let's turn this up by 12 semitones. We can hear while I'm playing this, we're getting a low tone, but there's also quite a very high pitch tone going on above it. Let's go down a couple of octaves and have a listen. So what notes are we hearing here? Well, we need to take, again, the sum of oscillator one and two. So that would be 261.63 hertz for oscillator one and 130.81 hertz for oscillator two. That's going to equal 392.44 hertz. If we bring up our table again, we can see that 392.44 falls around the G4 mark. So we're actually hearing oscillator one play a G4 which would be all the way up here. And for the other tone, we need to figure out what the difference is. So we would take oscillator one, 261.62, minus oscillator two, which is 130.81, equals 130.81. So we're hearing a C3. So again, don't get too hung up on the nitty gritty. That's just as basically how ring modulation is working. And in using that, we can get some really unique sounds and tones out of it. Don't forget that you can use the pulse width control to sort of change how these oscillators are. So you can almost use the pulse width as like a wave shaping kind of option. Maybe we want to turn this halfway and we'll map it to LFO1. Pretty cool stuff. Let's play around a little bit more. Go new synth, ring mod. Cool. And let's just transpose this around a little bit. Awesome. And maybe we'll make the polyphony mono. Let's try and make some cool bass noise. Maybe we'll throw in a little bit of portamento. So 
Let's play around with the pulse width. We'll just do it on that first one and we'll map that to LFO one. Great. And uh, let's up the number of voices to two. Detune them slightly. Cool. And you know, we could use the drive filter to get some more bass harmonics out of this. Pretty cool stuff. So yeah, that's the ring mod engine. I don't really play around with it all that much, but I do find like those um, sort of higher range notes and things that you can get and slightly detuning them. I use it for mainly making like builds and rises, sort of uh, crazy sounds that you might sort of throw in to have a build up in a track or something like that. We could give that a go. Maybe we'll map the transpose control of oscillator 2 to LFO 1. Actually, let's map it to envelope 2. So that would be like a really cool drop. And maybe we want to drop the sustain down. Cool. So let's go resample. Great. And um, I kind of liked it having a, a chord shape in there. I thought that was really cool. So I'm going to resample that as well. Great. Now what we can do is create a new track, make it a new kit track. Nice. Uh, maybe we'll just go this one for now though. I just like the sound of that other one. It was pretty cool. So we'll load that in and let's edit the waveform so that it starts right on the transient. Great. And we can bring the end point up to here. Awesome. And we'll place that down. Just extend this to maybe like four bars. And now um, playing with the rest of our song, we could side chain that a little bit to the kick. We'll get this.
Great. I mean, I think, you know, that might work a little bit better um, pitched up an octave, but it might sound terrible. Yeah, something like that. We'll add on a little bit of reverb. Uh, some more side chain. I think I forgot to uh, unlock the pinch and, uh, pitch and speed. A little bit of delay. All right, and you know, we could load in the um, exact same sound. Let's play around with the um, start and end point of that. And uh, probably just to maybe about there. Um, and let's reverse it. And uh, side chain that a little bit. Give it a reverb. So yeah, ring mode is um, really actually kind of fun. You can just mess around with it for ages and just come up with really cool zany sounds and then resample them in. That's usually what I like to do anyway. And then um, try to find a way to make them work for whatever your workflow is at the time. Anyways, I think that's all that I have to say about ring modulation in the Deluge. It's actually really cool. I would go as far as to say, I think ring modulation in this is probably the least explored thing on the deluge and i think that more people should use it um just you know look what we made here with these lifts and rises there are tons of cool and crazy sounds you can make completely internally with this thing so that you're not heavily relying on other people's samples and whatnot and uh yeah it's a lot of fun anyways that's it for me today everybody hit the like if you like and if you don't tell me why please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one cheers